Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the progress we are making in our teachers' conference here. Thank you for the way you have been speaking to our hearts since we came. Thank you for the truth you are making plain and making bare to everyone. Thank you for the challenges that you are giving us. We are asking, O oh Lord, that as we come again to listen to your word now, you will speak your word to every heart in Jesus' name. We are asking, O oh Lord, that what you speak to us will stand upon these things. We will practice your word. We will profit by your word. We will become channels of blessings to these children and to the youth in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. This morning we come to consider a subject that has naturally two parts. And these two parts are very important. We're going to stay with these two parts. And we're going to allow the Lord himself to deal with our hearts. And make us to know the importance of such a message like this because many people that say they are serving the Lord and many people that say they give themselves to the Lord so that much will be achieved they do many many things except these important things there are many things we do when we say we are serving the Lord and many of those things will not actually be effective and fruitful except we know these foundational things that we are considering today and it's uh, based on prayer and care prayer and care and we are particularly looking at uh, the story of samuel and we're talking about birth through prayer and growth through care that is bringing forth through prayer and then growing up through care and uh, you will see that what we're discussing we are considering an individual and then we're considering a nation we're considering an individual and then we're considering a ministry we're considering an individual and we're considering through that individual the work of the lord many times we miss a lot of lessons in life because we pass by things that appear common and things that appear solitary things that appear that they relate to just an individual and we say that was the individual but do you know everything you want to learn about the whole water in an ocean you can learn from a drop of water from that ocean and everything you want to learn about productivity in the nation you can learn in the productivity in the individual that's why we're taking the life of Anna the body of Anna the sorrow and sadness in Anna the prayer that Anna prayed and we're taking the attitude of Anna we're also taking the response of God to Anna's prayer we're looking into all that and then we're bringing all those lessons upon the whole nation of Israel put it this way Anna had a problem the nation also had a problem Anna did not have a child the nation did not have a prophet Anna only saw gloominess and darkness in her little family in her little life and when we look at the nation of Israel at that time we only saw and we only see gloominess and darkness and as a prayer changed the situation and it is when a nation gets on its knees 
that you change the situation in that nation. Anna saw that within herself there was nothing that will produce the child that will bring the joy to herself and to the family and we better realize there is nothing in the country in the nation in itself that will produce the joy and accomplish the purpose of the lord and so anna was barren and israel was spiritually barren sadness and sorrow filled her heart in that sadness and in that sorrow she prayed and sought the face of the lord and god gave her a child in god giving anna a child god gave the nation a prophet that's why as you have seen the comparison now anna the nation physical barrenness spiritual barrenness god moving into the life of anna and God moving into the life of the nation. Prayer changing Anna and changing Anna's circumstances. Prayer changing the nation and changing the circumstances of the nation. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face, pray unto the Lord, turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven i will bless their land i will heal their land i will forgive their sin and so you see then that prayer as it's important for an individual it's also important for the nation but then we're also considered in the ministry you look at the ministry that god has called us into the ministry towards the children and although the children are physically there many of the children are not born into the kingdom that is there is spiritual dryness there is spiritual barrenness there is no conversion in many of the uh, women, children ministries and the youth ministries where many people come from although the activities are there although the songs are there although the teachings are there although the discussions are there although the bible games are there although the bible puzzles are there although the bible dramas might be there everything you can think about in activity all those things are there but where are the conversions where are they converted where is the spiritual life where is the glory of heaven and the glory of god in the lives of those children in the lives of the youth that brings sorrow into our hearts as it brought sorrow in Anna's heart. That leads us to our knees. As it led Anna to her knees. That makes us to cry unto the Lord. As it made Anna to cry unto the Lord. That makes us to hold on to the horns of the altar. Saying I will not let you go. Except you bless me. As Anna tarried in prayer. While all the other people had gone. Anna waited there. The husband had gone, Anna waited there. Other worshippers had gone, Anna waited there. Even Eli was sitting down relaxed, Anna waited there, holding on, saying, I must get something. I must get something. Fruitfulness must come into my life. And here we are. We look at what we have done. In our various regions, in our various states, and we realize everything seems to be in place except prayer the burden of prayer and as we come and we tarry before the lord and we say this time i'm going to become fruitful will be fruitful in jesus name you know if you look at the people that uh, we find in the bible the people that were barren the people that had no children in bible days and uh, you find out they had to pray and pray and pray before they could have the children you'll discover that those children they became significant children think of sarah it wasn't easy it took many years there was sorrow there was problem in the family but there was a desire and abraham prayed unto the lord and said oh lord what are you going to give me the servant of my house is the one that is ruling everything 
where is the child of my own and the lord said the child will come and eventually gave him isaac can you see isaac was significant very significant have you thought about uh, rachel rachel was so determined about having children and uh, she had seen leah her own sister having children look at genesis chapter 30 verse 1 and when rachel saw that she bare jacob no children rachel envied her sister and said unto jacob give me children or else i die the uh, the body was so much the sorrow was so much the, the sadness was so much and uh, it was like if i don't have this why am i living eventually god gave her a child do you know the name of the first child god gave her what's the name joseph and you will see the sickness the significance there again that when a woman had been waiting for a child in bible days and then had to pray had to desire had to go with that body unto the lord eventually the child that is given to that uh, woman becomes a very significant child. Do you remember Manoah's wife? She too had no child, although she had been uh, married for some time. Again, because of that body, that body leading them to expectation from the Lord, an angel visited her. And eventually, a child was born. What's the name of that child? Samson. Again, you will see and that samson did something in israel he defeated the philistines significant children coming out of the body of prayer that means then in your own life if you will look up to the lord as a person in ministry and you see that the ministry is barren you see there is no fruit you're even asking yourself what am i doing you see that there is no joy you cannot see the effect and the influence and the impact of the children's ministry and the youth ministry in which you are and as you see that a spiritual barrenness and that spiritual dryness if it can create within you a burden to pray you will see that the fruit of it will be real joy and real fruit that everybody will be happy about even heaven will be happy about it you remember in the new testament elizabeth she too had married many many years and now she was already old and there was no child and they had prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and it appeared that the prayer was not uh, going to be answered eventually the angel of the lord came to the husband and said the lord has heard your prayer it has come before the lord as a memorial a child will be born what's the name of that child john the baptist and you will see once again how significant that child became what i'm telling you is this children that come through prayer become not just children for the family they become prophets preachers significant people in the nation and you can think of all other women in the bible too who had that same problem and before they had the child they really prayed and then as a result of the prayer the child was given then they became significant in the family in the nation and to their generation the generations beyond that's why we're considering in our own ministry as we see that there is a barrenness there is not enough fruit there is not enough revival and uh, we have not seen enough conversions among the children and among the youth we we'll say what are we going to do then we remember birth through prayer and growth through care i told you that the message has two parts naturally so i'm going to consider just two points in the message number one birth through prayer birth through prayer now here we are and we have men and women here and uh, it is uh, possible that you yourself you are married and it is possible that you don't have a child yet and it will be very very unfortunate if everything we say this morning you only think of the one side of the problem and you say yes i'm looking for a child I sympathize with you but I also rejoice with you 
that because you are here and you are listening to all this and God is no respecter of persons, what he did for those other people, he will do for you in Jesus' name. But if you are just that one-sided and all you need is just a child for yourself, that's too small. You should want a prophet for the nation, a preacher for the nation, an evangelist for the nation, so that there will be a double portion. That's what Elisha said. Elisha said, I'm not just wanting only one single blessing. I want a double portion. And the double portion is, look at Anna. Anna had a child for the family. Her prayer had been answered. But on top of that, that child became a prophet for the nation. And that should be our prayer. I don't just want an ordinary child. I don't just want to say, now I've got my own child. That's not enough. You're looking for a child that will fulfill two roles. Number one, your own child. That child will become a child of God. And that child will be a prophet, a preacher, an evangelist to the nation. That's actually our goal. And therefore, as we're looking through all this this morning, let your mind center on those two things not just a child for my family i want this child also to be significant in the kingdom of god but then there are those of us either you are not married yet or you are married and you already have uh, too many children and uh, maybe you have so many children that uh, you even want to if possible now give out some as gifts to other people and uh, you say there are so many well and you are you don't have too many you are taking care of can i dash you one so you can take care of them i know that uh, some of you here you uh, don't uh, you don't think that uh, the children are enough you have so many and you are still saying uh, well uh, pastor thank god for the message of this morning i have some children but i won't mind if you pray for me i can have more too I was, uh, you know, uh, recently I went to some countries in Africa here and I was uh, preaching and after the message I had the privilege of counseling people and so a family came, they needed counseling and uh, the, uh, the man and the woman, you know, they sat down there and the woman carried a child in her hand and uh, the tummy also was big and expecting another child and uh, so I spoke to them and then I said, uh, okay, can, because others are waiting, can you tell me? Go straight to the point. What question do you have? And uh, so the woman said, sir, is it a sin if somebody stops, wants to stop bearing children after bearing a few? So I said, why do you want to stop now? She said, she, not that she wants to stop. She's only asking whether it's a sin to stop. So I said, how many children do you have already? Before I answer your question, uh, she said, I have only nine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, the husband said, uh, Pastor, before you answer her question, uh, she is also pregnant expecting the tenth one. So I then asked uh, the husband, I said, uh, husband, uh, before I answer the question, you tell me, because I don't want to bring confusion in your family. Um, is it a sin to stop uh, now after this tenth one? Well, the husband said, I don't know. Uh, because uh, after all, God said, replenish and fill up the whole earth. Uh, so I said, thank you very much. I said that filling up the whole earth is not your responsibility alone. We are very many. And all of us are to fill up the whole earth. And so you don't do the work of what? Of everybody. You are not the only one that will fill up the whole earth. Uh, so I said, uh, what do you think now? I said, well, we, we can stop. We can stop. That's all right. And so you see, there are many people that already have so many. And here I come preaching this morning. And they say, Pastor, this is a wonderful message. Yes, I want to bear fruit in my ministry. But uh, I already got uh, nine. Since you have to told us about that, pe those people now that have ten, pray for me this morning. Maybe I will, I will stop after ten. 
But do you have the money to take care of so many? Do you have the money to educate so many? And uh, when in your little family you become like a class in primary school. And already you have uh, them there. You know, you already have 20, 25. And uh, you don't know how you are going to clothe them, how you are going to educate them. I think we need to be reasonable. Is that all right? Now, we're talking about uh, prayer. And we're talking about care. And uh, we're talking about our ministry as well as our personal lives. And I said there are two points. Point number one, birth through prayer. Number one, birth through prayer. Number two, growth through care. Those are the two points we're going to consider. Once again, let me remind you that all that we're saying, we're going to be applying to your personal life and we're going to be applying to the ministry that God has called you into. Look at 1 Samuel now. 1 Samuel chapter 1, reading from verse 9. So Anna rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, <clears throat> the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And uh, she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept so. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on, mine, on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Now we find that Anna had a body. The body was created by the problem she had in her personal life. She was the first wife of Elkanah. But she didn't have any child. And Elkanah had married another woman. It may be that uh, the same thing that pushes people into polygamy. Pushed Elkanah into polygamy. But that's not the will of God. Because at the beginning, God made them male singular and female singular. And the two of them, not three of them, they became one flesh. And the Lord is still telling us the same thing, that if you're a Christian, it's one man and one wife. But in this case of Elkanah, she had gone into polygamy, she married another one. And the other one started bearing children. And she, he loved Anna. But then Anna had no child. And because of this, it became a thorn in her flesh. A shame to her life. A reproach to her person. People were looking at her as if something was wrong. And because of that, she now decided man cannot solve this problem. And because man cannot solve this problem, I will take this problem unto the Lord. They went to Shiloh. Those days, the children of Israel will leave all their territories, all their tribes, and go to a central place to worship the Lord. Just like we have come from very many places. And we have come to the central point here to worship the Lord and to get vision from on high. And so they went. They had done everything. They had done all the sacrifices. They had done all the worshiping. Everything they wanted to do, they had done. And the other people felt the services had ended. Everything was over. But then Anna said, Will I go back home the same way I came? Barren, without any fruit, sorrow, shame, reproach. Everybody looking down at me and thinking that something is wrong. No, I will not go back that way. Can I speak to somebody? Eli? No. Eli's children? No. My husband? No. Penina? No. Can I talk to somebody? Nobody on earth will understand. Nobody on earth cared enough. Nobody on earth could help. And therefore she said, I will go to God in prayer. And so she went to the Lord in prayer. And she began to pray in the bitterness of her soul. There is a kind of prayer that when your heart is broken, when your heart is bruised, when your heart is touched, 
when it appears that something is suppressing your life and that thing pushes you, drags you, compels you, weakens your body, you fall on the ground on your knees and you begin to, you begin to groan in the sight of the Lord. There is something in that kind of prayer that it's coming, it is not coming from your head, it is not coming from your knowledge, it is not just coming from a dry soul, a dry heart. The heart is weeping. The heart is melted. The heart is broken. And out of the broken heart, out of the broken fountain, in the very depths of the hidden mind, hidden man within, you are groaning unto the Lord and you are making your supplication before the Lord. There is something that that kind of prayer does. And so Anna had that kind of prayer. It came from the broken death of the heart. And the water and the river gushed out in the sight of the Lord. She was in bitterness of soul. And prayed unto the Lord and wept so. Come back to the ministry. You know many times we will say that we have come together and we are praying for the ministry. We are praying so that there will be converts. In fact, it may be that in the children's church, every time, it may be that you will raise up a prayer request. And you will say, uh, now church, children should get involved. As when the service today, we are going to pray. We we'll pray for the nation. We we'll pray for our children's church here. We we'll pray for uh, the children, the church leader there. We we'll pray for everybody. But you know that kind of prayer? The heart is not broken. There is no burden. There is not a broken fountain. And the water oozing out, flowing out. It's a kind of normal, regular, dry prayer that has no heart in it. And uh, we pray that kind of prayer. And we're surprised we've been praying that prayer for years every Sunday. And yet there is no result. It may be that uh, we come together. And uh, we also pray, and we're praying during the time uh, in the night, and uh, we come night vigil. And if that night vigil is a normal, regular night vigil, well, many regular night vigils don't actually accomplish anything. We come together there, and uh, the night vigil has become a form, a format, ceremony. And we know that, uh, you know, Friday night stroke Saturday morning is our night vigil. And we go there as usual. No broken heart. No burden. No sorrow. There is no sadness. There is no load of weight within that is pushing us and saying, if I don't get this thing, why am I here on earth? Give me children or else I die. Give me Scotland or else I die. Give me converts or else I die. Give me fruitfulness in ministry or else I die. If that kind of burden is not there, if it's a usual night vigil, it doesn't bear fruit, but the kind of night vigils that bear fruit. Somebody is just looking around. He looks at the lives of these children. And as he looks at the lives of these children, they are not born again. They are rascally. They are rude. They are rebellious. They are not serious even with the Bible. We bring them to church, but they are worse than people who don't come to church. We look every time we see them, we are burdened. And we begin to say, these children, they are being hardened even by the gospel they are hearing. And then, as you look at them, you lose your appetite. You can't eat anymore. There is a burden in you. While you are going on the road, you are seeing these children. Are they going to remain like this? How is it that they are so bad like this? How is it we are preaching to them and there is no conversion and there is no change? And you become almost absent-minded. That while you are thinking about them, somebody is saying, A good morning, sister. You didn't even hear. Until the fellow came and pushed you and said, Sister, what's the matter? You are sorrowful. You are absent-minded. I've been calling your name. I've been uh, looking at you. And it appears that your mind is not here. You are not looking at somebody staying here. It's like you are in another place. Oh, then you wake up and say, my brother or my, my sister, there is a body. I don't know. I see these children we are ministering to. There is such a concern. There is such a body in me. I don't know what I will do. And before you even talk much, you begin to cry for them. There is a broken fountain already. 
You are bleeding within because of this. And then the fellow sees that if he continues to talk to you, it will be a disturbance to you. You quickly find a place where you just collapse on the ground. Just kneel on the ground. You begin to wrestle. That kind of prayer will bring fruit in ministry. That kind of prayer will bring birth in ministry. That kind of prayer will bring revival in ministry. The same thing with the youth. You find that you've been working with these young people. Oh yes, we have a regular Bible study. We have a leadership training for them every week. And we have this fellowship with them. And we have a Bible quiz with them. We have all the Bible games with them. During the holidays, we even try to have a free vacation school. And uh, what do we discover? Uh, in the, maybe in your state or in your region, we find some of these uh, children that uh, they are already trying to even smoke. You find that uh, some of these uh, girls, you meet them outside during the holidays and they are wearing their slats. And uh, you meet some of these uh, children, it's like uh, there's no effect of the gospel on them. And uh, if you are going to take it negatively, you'll say there is no point uh, wasting my time on these children. You will just uh, fall out from the youth ministry and you will pack it up. But we are going to do like Anna. It will bring sorrow in your heart. It will bring burden upon you. And you are not wrestling with flesh and blood. You are not fighting against those children. You are wrestling against principalities and powers. And rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places you put on the whole arm of god it gives you a body reminds me many many years ago a secondary school teacher in a uh, open stage and uh, she had she had a little group of children and this uh, little group of children uh, they were already being led to the lord and she was uh, really happy and joyful and the children came on holidays uh, to lagos and she happened to just come to Lagos, a, a secondary school teacher at that time. And she got into the bus, and uh, then she came down, and she didn't know that one of her students in the Christian group was uh, in that bus, so that girl also came down. When this teacher, Christian teacher, saw this girl, the girl from the appearance, from the dressing, and from the company, and from everything around her, the teacher knew that, ah, is it not so and so? And so that teacher, a lady, and the other student, a girl, went to that girl and they grabbed her and they held her and she couldn't say anything and they were on the side of the road and they were right in the public and the teacher began to cry. She held to that girl, held on to that girl, couldn't, she just mentioned the name and said so and so, looked at her again, looked at the appearance and just burst into tears, crying crying and the people were passing she was she didn't know people were passing anymore she was uh, it was like what happened to this girl crying 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 and uh, that girl also began to cry and right on that road there that girl began to say teacher i am sorry i will repent i will serve the lord the teacher couldn't answer she still kept on crying until that girl stopped telling her teacher i will repent i'm sorry that that girl began to pray on the side of the road there she prayed 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 until the joy of salvation came on the side of the road that's the thing we're talking about the kind of burden the kind of prayer that pushes you and leads you that you just feel this child must come back to the lord not the kind of thing that will say well the children are not serious and they are not going to serve the lord it brings burden it brings sorrow in your heart and through that prayer they are born into the kingdom you have seen the way that uh, anna prayed and eventually uh, you know the story after eli had said put away your wine from you and she said i'm not drunk i'm speaking because of the burden i'm a woman of sorrow look at verse 15 anna answered and said no my lord she wasn't rude when your heart is broken you cannot be rude anymore when your heart is burdened you cannot be rude anymore when you are crying from the very depth of your heart and you are crying for revival among the children among the youth you cannot be rude no my lord i am a woman of a sorrowful spirit i have drunk neither wine nor strong drink but i poured out my soul before the lord count not thine handmaid 
for a daughter of Belial. For out of the burning of the abundance of my complaints and grief have I spoken hitherto. Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And uh, she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did heed, and her countenance was no more sad. You will see then that it was this kind of prayer that brought Samuel out, that uh, made Samuel to be born, and that gave the nation of Israel a prophet. If we're really going to see these children born into the kingdom, delivered from their sin, and delivered from occultism, it is not by beating them. You know, there are some school teachers, because uh, they are the school teachers uh, over there, and these children, they are not doing well spiritually. They are not praying. They are not reading the word of God. They are not interested. Uh, what some of the teachers will do is to say, you didn't come to a Bible study fellowship uh, during the week. Where were you? We were playing football. Come over here. And then they will use the authority of being a teacher and begin to beat that child. That's not going to convert the child. That's not going to change the child. If you do that, you are going to scare the child away from really serving the Lord. You get on your knees and you pray. In Lamentation chapter 2. Lamentation chapter 2. Reading from verse 18. Lamentations 2, 18. Birth through prayer. Revival through prayer. Conversion through prayer. Bringing these children to the Lord because you just enter into the body of prayer that your heart is broken. Out of that broken fountain, you are speaking unto the Lord, pouring out your heart to the Lord for the children and for the young people. Lamentation chapter 2, verse 18. Their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like uh, a river day and night give thyself no rest let not the apple of thine eyes arise cry out in the night in the beginning of the watches pour out thine heart like water before the face of the lord lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street you will see there that what we need if we really want uh, these children that are fainting, want them to come back to life. If we want these children that are lost, we want them to be found in the bosom of the Savior. If we want these children that are going worse and worse every day in sin, we want the yoke of sin to be broken in their lives. And we want them to be born again, to have new life in Christ. If we want these children that are getting into occultism, witchcraft, and sorcery and magic and familiar spirit kind of a group and mommy water spirit if we want them to be delivered it is not caning them but it is praying that it it says you you will pour out your heart and you'll pour it like water like a river before the lord you will give yourself no rest and it says day and night let not the apple of thine eyes cease it says you will arise you will cry out in the night in the beginning of the watches you'll pour out your heart like water before the face of the lord that means then if we really want to have ministry towards the children it is uh, not just that we tell Bible stories, we have to do that. It's not just that we read the Bible to them alone, we have to do that. It's not that just activities alone, we have to do that. We'll be pouring out our hearts. We'll be praying for them. And we will be seeking the face of the Lord. You will have the names of those children that are with you. And no matter how many they are, you write a list of all their names. And then, when you get to them one by one, not just praying a general prayer. Oh Lord, bless our school fellowship. Bless our children church and fellowship. Bless all these children. Let them know the Lord. Well, maybe that's better than nothing. But it will do little more than nothing. But you, you have a list of these children. And then when you begin to pray, and you, when you are going to pray, you really have time. You know that this is the most important thing you could ever do and the most important thing you are doing now. 
and you read the promises of the Bible that God loves children, he wants them to be saved, of them are the kingdom of, is the kingdom of God, and then you now begin to pray, standing on the promises of the Lord. And you take the names of those children one by one. And as you remember the lives of each of those children, what they are passing through at home, the confusion in their lives, the problems in their lives, when you get to some of those uh, children and uh, their problems become heavy load, heavy weight, mountain upon you, that may even crush you, you begin to cry. It's not that you are pretending, it really touches from the depth of your heart. And then you begin to seek the face of the Lord. It is that kind of prayer that will give birth, that will give revival, that will give life and heaven will descend into that fellowship of young people of children and you will see that much will be done in isaiah chapter 66 isaiah chapter 66 reading from verse 8 who has heard such a thing who has seen such things shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day shall a nation be born at once for as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children, travailing in prayer, seeking the Lord in prayer, making supplication before the Lord, praying with all kinds of prayer, petitioning the throne of heaven, knocking at the gate of God, asking requests, making requests for each of the children, seeking that their souls will be saved they'll be brought into the kingdom seeking the lord praying unto the lord until they are actually saved until they actually come to know the lord it is by prayer that they'll be born into the kingdom you see when you are really pray when you have really prayed and you become a, a kind of fountain always flowing out and you are talking to the lord every time You'll be able to minister to the children very, very easily. And then you come to the fellowship. When you come to the fellowship, the fellowship will not be so dry with a lot of friction. You get into some school fellowship where a teacher is teaching uh, the students. Or you get into some uh, kind of uh, children's church where the leader there is leading those children. You will see that that teacher is struggling. It's like when you are running your vehicle without oil. There's a lot of heat. There's a lot of friction. There's a lot of inconvenience. There's a lot of noise that uh, you are hearing that is not very convenient to the ear. But when you put oil and all the friction is uh, removed. The same thing when you are, you are being in the closet. You have prayed. You have cried. And your, your eyes already have been affected. You have cried, you have wept, you have prayed to the point that your heart is sorting. Your heart is broken. Your voice has been affected. Your mind has been affected. Even your constitution, everything within you has been affected. And uh, the Spirit of God has taken ascendancy over your body. It means that the thought of heaven... The thought of the Bible, spiritual matters, they become important to you. And then all friction has been taken out by the oil of the Spirit of God that was poured into your whole system while you are praying for the children. Now you come in front of the children and you want to talk to them, there can be, there can be no friction. There will be no problem. The thing will just be flowing out. And uh, if uh, you see any of those children you are prayed for, there will be faith in your heart. You will know that God is going to touch that child today. You see that other one that had been a runaway child and will not be consistent and now comes, there will be no rebuke. There will be no anger. There will be no irritation. The prayer you prayed in the closet has sorted you. You see that child now and that child looks at you, she will see the love of God on your face. She'll feel attracted to you. And the spirit of God in your life will bring conviction on that child that uh, the child might even be dodgy, not wanting to look at you. Every few minutes, the child looks up and looks at you like this. He'll just see the signal of the love of God. And the burden, the prayer that you have prayed, immediately you finish like this, that child will say, I think I want to know the Lord. I think I want to give myself to the Lord. You see, that's what we need today. Not just activity. The activities will be strengthened by prayer. 
the activities will be made productive by prayer in Psalm 144. Psalm 144. Here is prayer. In verse 11, read me, deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as the cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. Here you will see prayer for the children and prayer for the youth. And you are saying, uh, you know the presence of uh, wicked children, rebellious children, sinful children, lying Christian, and you know the uh, children that are cultic, the children that are demonized, and you know that they are growing, they are becoming more and more. And some of them are infiltrating into the group of the young people that were leading. And you are praying, read me, get rid of these strange behaviors and strange things that make the children strange. And then with the, their mouth speaking vanity, and their right hand is the right hand of falsehood, so that our own sons, the sons God has given us, they will be as cornerstones, and they will be as a people that are growing up in their youth, polished after the similitude of the palace. And you see that the prayer here touches both the sons and the daughters. Verse 12, that our sons may be. That is, the prayer will affect, will impact our sons, the boys. And then, that our daughters may be. Again, the prayer affects even the daughters as well. You see, we can get these children together and give them the do's and the don'ts and the rights and the wrongs and the thou shalt not and the thou shalt and all the laws we can give unto them without prayer everything will be a burden upon them that they cannot carry but if you pray through and you pray very well and the power of God just comes upon them to help them and to assist them then you'll be able to have children and of course those children will also borrow and they will also get from your prayer life as well and as a result of that, you and the children that God has given you, you'll actually be a wonder in that community. That's the result. That's the effect. Look at Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Let's read it from verse 17. I will wait upon the Lord. It starts with prayer. Prayer coming out of body. Coming out, coming out of a sorrowful heart. Coming out of a desire to see these children right in the bosom of the Father. I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. I will look for him. It appears the face of the Lord had been hidden. Because we preach and the children are not born again. We seek and the children are not responding. We have Bible games and the children are not interested. We try to follow them up and the children are dodging us. And it appears that the children's ministry and the youth ministry in our locations, in our regions, everywhere, very few of us are having a breakthrough. And it appears that the blessing of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, revival that were once among the children, it appears they are not there. It appears the Lord is hiding his face from the house of Jacob. Therefore we decide, I will pray unto him. I will wait for the Lord. I will look for him. What's the result of that prayer? What's the result of waiting upon the Lord? What's the result of that supplication? Verse 18. Behold, I and the children, whom the Lord has given me, are for signs and for wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts, who, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. That means then, as uh, we pray, uh, through that prayer, the Lord gives us children. The children that are born through prayer, they themselves will become prayerful children. Children that are born by the power of God, those children themselves, they will carry the power of God. And children that are born as a result of waiting in the presence of the Lord. Those children, when they come here into the world, they will not have rest except in the presence of the Lord. The same thing spiritually. 
If you bring up these children, if you bring them into the kingdom by waiting in the presence of the Lord, that more than just preaching, the prayer ministry brings the children into the presence of the Lord. Those children, when they are converted, they themselves, they will be much, much, much in the presence of the Lord. With the power of the Lord. And so he says, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me were for signs and for wonders in Israel. I pray the Lord will do it for us. Now we go to point number two. Growth through care. Growth through care. Uh, you will see that Anna got Samuel by prayer. But then uh, that uh, Samuel was not just left like that. Anna knew that she had responsibility towards that child. And uh, the responsibility she had towards that child was to care for the child. One, Anna brought that child to the presence of the Lord and left him for the Lord. The children we are leading, once they are born again, show them God is your heavenly father. You are responsible to God. Whatever you do, whatever you don't do, don't do it because of me, your father in the Lord, your mother in the Lord. That means the person who has led you to the Lord, the one who is leading the fellowship, do it because of the Lord. Let that ch uh, child be God conscious. Let that child be conscious that God is everywhere. He say, you know their song, God sees us. Everything that you do, little legs, he sees where you are walking to. And little eyes, he sees what you are looking at. Little hands, he sees what you are holding. Let that child be conscious of God in training them up. Bring them to the presence of the Lord. Care for them. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 1 again. Reading from verse 26. For Samuel. Chapter 1. In verse 27. For this child I pray. And the Lord has given me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also have I lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. And so that child was given unto the Lord. But the mother didn't just leave the child like that. The mother kept on taking care of him. The children have been born into the kingdom. They are now saved. They are children of God. Oh, you will not say now they are born again and therefore I should leave them to themselves. They will face persecution at home, especially if their parents are not Christians. Unfortunately, some whose parents are even born again Christians, those parents do not take care very well of the spiritual lives of the children. Therefore, you will not say, well, they already, they are members in the church. Their parents are born again. Their parents are even members and workers in the church. Therefore, I can leave them to their parents now that they are born again. Let me go and concentrate on other children. You will take care of them. See how Anna did it. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, for Samuel chapter 2 verse 19. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year. When she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice regularly, year to year, this woman was making sure that she was caring for that child. And uh, that's what we'll do. We'll make sure that we are caring for the children. How do we care for the children? Well, we love the children. And as we're loving those children, we'll be bringing them up in the way of the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Reading from verse 7. But who are gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children, you will love the children. And they will know that you love them. They will know that you are fond of them. They will know that you are interested in every detail of their lives. You will not only be interested in how many chapters of the Bible have you read today. You will be interested in the academic work. You will be finding, you'll be finding out how about this, how about that. And if uh, you happen to be a teacher of a particular subject, then you will uh, help that child if you are teaching in that school. The only thing is that you make sure that you teach those children 
in the way of the Lord. If you are a man, for example, and you're teaching a school, and there are girls there in your Christian fellowship, and you have to teach them, and it will be very important you don't just single out a girl and teach her privately alone. Get about three or four of them together at the same time, and since they are all studying that subject, and teach them together. Rather than you as a man, you are getting those school children, and you are getting them individually in the secondary school or even in the primary school because of the bad, bad things that have happened uh, in some circles where they say they are Christians but they really don't have the life of Christ in them. Make sure there is no immorality. Make sure there is no evil suggestion. But make sure you are caring for them. You are teaching them and they can see that it is practical love that is helping them in their academics and helping them in various ways too. And if they have needs in their lives, like uh, uh, they need some minor, minor things, clothes, books, whatever. If uh, the fellowship there, the Christian fellowship there, if there is fun, that those little children have been contributing 10 kobo, 20 kobo, 50 kobo, or 1 naira, and whatever. And we see some of the children have some needs, we can help those children. And we can buy some basic needs and necessities for them. And if it goes beyond what we can do, then we can talk to the adult church in town. That uh, these children, they love the Lord, they have come to know the Lord, but they have some needs in their lives that is part of the care. Then we were gentle among you. As a nurse cherishes her children, you handle those children with care because those children are young and tender so that you don't do anything that will destroy them in verse 8 so being affectionately desirous of you we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of god only but also our own souls because ye were dear unto us dear unto us uh, during the holidays uh, when they have scattered in various places before they leave uh, school, if they are in secondary school and they have come to your city uh, where you are, now they are going to go into various towns. You'll ask them in your fellowship, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? And then they will tell you where they are going because you, take, you care for their lives. You might uh, have an assignment and you say that during the holidays, already you have made a kind of uh, timetable for them. And you say each day, if uh, during these holidays we want to read uh, the uh, gospel according to St. John, you have done some little work by yourself, privately. You know that the holiday is going to take them perhaps three weeks or perhaps four weeks. You divide up the whole gospel according to St. John. You say uh, the first day, you write the date, you write maybe John chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. Then the following day, you write the day, John chapter 1, verses uh, 21 to uh, verses uh, maybe 11 to 20. And then you divide up everything like that, you roll it out, cyclosyl it, and give it to all those uh, children. You say when you get uh, back home during your holidays, this is what you will be doing. And then if you have a prayer request, you are going to write out the prayer request. All the names are there on the first day. You divide everything up. We're going to pray for this. We're going to pray for our school. We're going to pray for our fellowship. All those prayer requests are there. When they get back home, they know what to do spiritually. And then you tell them where they'll be fellowshipping with other young people who know the Lord, who love the Lord during the holidays. You will get all the information. All of you who are going to Lagos, you will get to Bagada, our uh, DLSO, our uh, young people, uh, youth ministry is there. Just ask for the office and they will direct you and they will link you up uh, to with the people that are serving the Lord. Those of you that are going to Port Harcourt, those of you going to Ibadan, those of you that are going to Oweri, and those of you that are going to Kaduna or Kano. Here is where you'll find a fellowship of children of God who love the Lord like you. Then you tell them, when you go there, be a challenge. Let them see that you are coming from a school fellowship, that even the children there will be asking, ah, this child is so prayerful. This child knows the word of God. From which school, from which fellowship is this child coming? 
that even the people you are going to see in Kaduna there, the people we will see in Kano there, they will be so challenged that when you come back, some of them will be writing to you and they will be saying, pray for me because we see that you are a prayerful child. That's how to care for the children. Not that we just uh, have school fellowship. And then when they have gone on holidays, there is nothing we're going to do for them again. And uh, those of us in the primary school, those children are not traveling too far. And because the children are not traveling too far during the holidays, during the holidays, you'll have a kind of program for them. And the program you have for them may be in the church. You will talk to their parents and say, all these children, because they are not doing it in the holidays, we don't want them just to be wasting their time. You might tell their parents, we want to keep on teaching them their school lesson. Because when they come back, it's going to take a few weeks or a few months, and then they will take the exam. Because of that, their parents will accept. They will be sending them to a central place, a nearby place, where you will be teaching them, and then there will be prayer. And then they will be studying the word of God as well as their school subjects. And uh, those of us, uh, for example, uh, let's say you are in, uh, in Benin City. And uh, during the holidays, where you have some uh, children, uh, some youth, secondary school now, they are from Lagos. And uh, from uh, Ibadan, they are from Ibadan, they are in Benin City. Uh, some of them from uh, Enugu, they are in Benin City. From all over, they have come to spend holidays with their parents, with their uncles. And then you will make, you tell them to help you make announcement in the church. Uh, that's in the gospel church uh, where, uh, you know, we are, if you are in deeper life. And then they will announce, they will say, all children, young people coming from all over uh, Nigeria, you are spending holidays here, we want to welcome you in a special way. And if you are secondary school children, and here you are, and you know some of uh, your brothers and sisters, they are Christians, and they have come to spend holiday in Bini City here, Tell them, we're going to have reception for them. Well, because uh, we're a hospitable estate here, and the church is very hospitable here, we want to see every one of them. And then the pastor, the, you know, the adult church there, and uh, the leader of the young people there, you know, we have the reception for them, and we allow them to come out, and uh, they will say, where are you from? And these uh, few people say, we are from Lagos. Ah, you are from the headquarters. That's in that place where those young people are singing. You must sing for us and teach us before you go. We have made you our, you know, choir masters before you go. You must change our choir before you go. Those children will feel attached. They will feel interested because you welcome them. And then, uh, you know, you say that uh, these ones, they say we are from Kaduna or we are from uh, Zaria or we are from the I uh, will say we have been waiting for you. You will teach us the history of the northern part of Nigeria. Uh, before you go back uh, to, to the north, we want to learn a lot. All this time now, those of us who have been teaching, we hand over the teaching to those children will feel flattered. They will feel what? So this is the way they have this uh, fellowship in Bini City here. I wish I could even transfer and come to Bini and be studying here. And then, you know, those who are from other places, you will get them interested. And then you welcome them like that. Then you say, now this is just reception. Every Monday or Tuesday, whatever the day, we have our youth Bible study. And during the holidays as you are here now, you will con just like you have been doing your state, you have been doing your school, our school fellowship will continue. Not only that, in uh, Benin here, we have a mathematics teacher and then we introduce him. We have a science teacher, then we introduce him. Then we have an English teacher, then we introduce her. Then we have the, all the other teachers, we introduce them and we say we have free vacation school here. And all of you children, you just tell us any subject where you are weak. We're going to concentrate on that. Because we want to prepare you for distinction in Jesus' name. And they will say amen more than you have said amen now. And then, uh, you know, we're telling them they're going to be the head. They're not going to be the tail. What are we doing? Is that fun? No, we're taking care of them. And when they feel they are loved, when they feel they are accepted, when they feel they are cared for, they will remain. We will do it in Jesus' name. In Psalm 34, Psalm 34, reading from verse 11. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. We care for them. We teach them. We train them. We guide them. We lead them. And we counsel them in taking decision, so that these children that pass through us in years to come, 
they will be the head and not the tail. They will be pillars in the church of the living God. They will serve the Lord, they will not serve the devil. They will be light in the world, in the community around them. And the power of the Lord will remain in their lives in Jesus' name. At the end of the journey, when we enter into the kingdom, we'll be able to look at the children that God has used us to raise up and right there in the gate of heaven. We'll be able to say, Behold, I and the children that God has given me, here we are. We have overcome all the problems on earth and we are entering into heaven together. I pray you will not be spiritually barren. I pray that your prayer life for the children ministry and for the youth ministry will come alive again. And many, many children, many, many young people will be born into the kingdom of God through you in Jesus' name. And they heart to care. They heart to love. They heart to be tender. They heart to be gentle. They heart to just bring these children, take these children, put them on your bosom spiritually, that these children will just like to be in your presence. Even when they have grown older, and they have grown much older, they will never forget you. Every time the lessons you have taught them, the things they have seen from you, every decision they want to make, they will be looking back, and they will say, thank God for brother son so thank god for sister so and so i pray god will make you a spiritual father he'll make you a spiritual mother and this work of the lord among children among youth will prosper in your hand in jesus name let there be prayer let there be care let's rise up and pray are you boarding for the children so i broke him for those wayward children are you praying for them? Are you consecrating yourself to care for them? Do everything necessary. To bring them to the Lord. To make them grow and develop in the Lord. 